Welcome back for part two of Arthrograms. So some indications or contraindications of why someone should have or not have an Arthrogram. Um, I think the contraindications are fairly self-explanatory um, for any of these exams that might have contrast media. Uh, if they have a severe allergy to contrast media or to the local anesthetics that might be used, then they might not be a good candidate for this um, or possibly pregnancy or if they have a significant infection um, or a, say a clotting issue or an excessive bleeding issue, something like that, because we're gonna puncture the skin. Um, indications for it, they might be looking for lesions of um, the meniscus, if there's damage to the joint capsules or um, ligament issues, arthritis, um, traumatic injuries, sports injuries, deformities, tears, cysts, disease, any of those they could be looking for on these arthrograms. One of the important things for any of your invasive procedures is that there is an informed consent. Um, because this is a procedure where they're going to be puncturing the skin and injecting contrast media, um, they need to have a consent form signed. The, all of the information needs to be given to them prior to them signing. Um, so the physician or resident or PA that is performing this exam should give the patient all the information, including possible side effects um, of this exam first. When the patient is fully informed, it is their choice whether or not to sign yes, or um, they can at that time decide not to have the exam, and that is their prerogative. Um, the performing radiologist should also sign that form and then use the technologist to sign and date as a witness. If the patient needs an interpreter for signing these forms or for the exam itself, it needs to be a certified interpreter. It cannot be a family member. So anytime a documentation is being signed, um, you need to call interpreter services for that and they need to be present for that. All right. Some patient history that I think um, is really important for these tests is asking them about their allergies. Do they have allergies to contrast? Do they have allergies to lidocaine, a latex allergy? We need to be aware of what type of gloves we have on. Um, are they on blood thinners? If they are, they should have stopped them prior to this test, but that's good information to have as well. Are they on any current medications? Do they have a history of diabetes or kidney disease before we inject this contrast media? Could they be pregnant? And then there's some laboratory values that should be checked by um, the physician, um, the radiologist or resident or whoever's gonna do this exam. They should make sure um, that they check those laboratory values. A timeout. Um, I'm not sure if a timeout is a requirement of all departments or um, if this is kind of across the board, but for our department, we require a timeout uh, prior to starting any of these invasive procedures. It's another safety um, net for us, basically, before we go and start this process. So it's kind of like the last <laughs> chance to bail out, basically. Um, it's making sure that you have the right patient, we're doing the right test, um, we have the right side. And the, so the patient should be awake and participating in the verification process. Um, all of the members that are going to be a part of it should be included in it and should be actively participating. They shouldn't be in the corner uh, doing something else and not paying attention while we're verifying all the information. So um, that is something that is an important step of the process. And so we need to make sure the timeout is done with everyone in the room and everyone paying attention before we start. All right, setup examples. So this is for our location, uh, what we would use. So each of your trays are gonna have a label on it. And so our say orthogram tray right on the top. And so you're gonna pull that out. Um, you're gonna have sterile gloves on the side. Ask for the radiologist size if you don't know it. Sometimes we have a cheat sheet in the protocol book of what rad uses what gloves. Um, we use chloroprep now. We have stopped using betadine, um, but that may vary per department. There's spinal needles uh, that may need to be used, some sterile towels, you'll need a skin marker, a hemostat, so they're going to place the hemostat on the part to label it. 
Uh, there's lidocaine that we'll need, some syringes, alcohol wipes, and there's these. this image here has a timeout form example and a lab slip form as well. On here, you'll see uh, the orthogram tray is placed on a metal cart. Uh, that makes it very easy for cleaning. We're not going to use the soiled linen bin. We're going to use a clean metal cart. Um, and then there's some more supplies here that you may not need to throw onto your sterile field. So once you open up that tray, you're going to kind of peel open and drop onto the tray, whatever your radiologist may need. This is just a picture of the inside of the tray. They may have um, a series of needles available, syringe sizes, tubing, um, the little blue things that look like you could use them for sponge painting um, <laughs> were what we used to use for the betadine, but now we move to the chloroprim. Needles, needle options. Um, so the draw needles are these up here that you would put on top of a syringe, and they each have a gauge, right? And so the gauge is... Um, the inside lumen. In your cabinet there's different sizes and options. The spinal needles will say spinal needle on them and they'll also have a gauge and in inches. Um, if it's a larger patient with a lot more soft tissue we have additional spinal needles that are longer so the radiologist may ask for one of those. Contrast options. So you're always going to use your water soluble contrast. You're never going to inject barium into anybody's joint space. Um, arthrograms can be done in single contrast or double. Single is contrast only. Uh, a double is a combination between water soluble contrast and um, a negative contrast, so air. There's um, a term in your book, it's called pneumo arthrography, and that's air only. Um, I've never seen this. So this is apparently when they have a contrast allergy and they only use air, but I've never seen that done. Um, if the patient is going to have an MRI afterwards, the radiologist is going to use our contrast media to make sure they're in the right place, and then they'll inject the gadolinium, and gadolinium is specific to MRI, um, and then so they'll be able to visualize that gadolinium contrast under their MRI scan. So. They're really using us to get the contrast into the joint so that they can perform the MRI scan. It could be a CT combination as well. Um, this is where we'll see possibly a double contrast. Sometimes they'll use contrast with a little bit of air as well. All of these protocols will be department specific and radiologist preference. So just make sure and check your protocol sheet and specifics asked for on your directions. Site prep. Site prep is extremely important uh, for these arthrograms or anything where you're going to be puncturing the skin. So it needs to be cleaned. We use the chloroprep, those little um, things on my screen here where you kind of crack the sides and then they're gonna clean um, the patient's skin with. They have an orange appearance to them and that is absolutely fine, they'll toss those. Sterile drapes are gonna be then placed over these could be a range of colors. Sometimes they're white, sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're clear. Um, again, just don't touch them. <laughs> so, just like the OR, don't touch them. Um, it's important to have strict infection control processes because we're going into a joint space. They're placing a needle into the joint space and we don't want to make any infection go into that joint space. They do use a numbing um, medication of lidocaine or xylocaine is the generic name for that. Um, to inject into the area first. So they'll do that first, numb the area, and then um, put that spinal needle down in and check the location. And so they may ask you as a technologist at that time to help them with the image intensifier. And if most of them run it themselves or set it up prior to, uh, but some of them don't. So you may have to floral for them because they're then sterile. Um, but cleaning, extremely important. All right, I'm going to meet you back here for part three.